All right, it's our first round table for the month of March. Hard to believe. And we're joined this morning by Democratic political analyst Marianne Marsh and Republican political analyst Rob Gray. Guys, thanks for being with us on this Sunday morning. Let's start with Amy Carnevale. Rob, I'll put this to you. Can she get the mass GOP back on the rails? Well, listen, she's off to a strong start, and it, it helps if you follow a disaster, which is what the former chairman, Jim Lyons, was. And, and she's, she's doing well. Like, she's basically laying it all out. Here are all the problems. We're going to fix it. Um, I, I thought her interview was good. It would struck a much more moderate tone than the prior chairman. And the Republican Party in Massachusetts has shrunken a ton, as has the Democratic Party. She needs money, though. Where does she get it? Well, that's the problem. When you don't have a governor to raise that money right. for you, it's really tough. To keep the lights on and to succeed, she'll have to raise a ton of money. Marianne? She sounded like she was in political purgatory here. I mean, she was almost doing Kevin McCarthy-like trade-offs here. The fact is, the Republican energy in Massachusetts is still with Trump. He got 1.2 million votes here. So the, the people, when Lyons left, those folks feel alienated. Yeah, but if, if she can find a Charlie Baker-like Republican... He, 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 what, cleared the, the field, you know, and well, he, had, he got 60% of the vote four years ago. I mean, it's, you got it's doable. You got an, I well, mean, that, that's, that's, not, that's Rob's gotta, job. But right? that'll be the judgment, right, on, but, on her, other than money, will be recruitment, right? Can she get a big candidate for U.S. Senate was, or for governor who has a chance to win? She was pointing to this, you know, unenrolled voters here. They have to see a whole lot more from her and certainly not hear about there might be some voter fraud here or Malfi on, on the absentee but, ballot stuff. And all. That's not going to fly Well, here. let's face They're it, unenrolled voters are the king they in Massachusetts. They are the king. Democrats have gone down. Republicans have gone down. Both parties have problems. Republicans, obviously, Look, more problems. She's straddling a fence, and when you do that, it never ends well. All right. It's been a big week from Governor Maura Healey. A proposal for free community college for adults over the age of 25 in her $55.5 billion budget. Some tax relief as well. Reforms on estate taxes and breaks for seniors, renters and families. Rob, let's start with you. What grade would you give her on her efforts here? Well, I, I think it has some good elements, but I, I mean, you have to give it like a C plus because the spending increase is so big. Um, just because you have the money doesn't mean you should spend it all at once and the budget has to be sustainable. I'm not sure yet. Is there enough spending in there for the meat and potatoes, roads and bridges um, versus some other fanciful ideas? But I do like the tax stuff and, and, and we'll talk about that later. I think she's done some good moderate stuff there. Marianne? Very focused, very detailed budget down to the color of the budget itself, green to show demonstrate her climate commitments, which are in it, in addition to the $55 billion that are in there. I mean, she is really putting a blueprint together of her campaign promises, which is what you want to do in that first budget, because you, you're showing people, I mean what I say, I say what I mean, I heard you on the campaign trail, now let's get this done. And even if she comes up short on some of them because of negotiations with the legislature, voters overwhelmingly will give her support and the benefit of the doubt for making the effort. And, and ultimately, it's up to the legislature. Yeah, it is a big increase over... Governor Baker's last budget, 15%. That's well beyond inflation. You can't do that every year. But look at the fact is, Charlie Baker, and we'll talk about this in a minute, there are a lot of things he didn't get to or invest in that she's got to fix, that she inherited. So she's making investments in places that are necessary. All right, so thinking about, talking about things to fix, we seem to talk about the T every week. Um, Governor Healy has not found her new general manager, and the heat keeps rising. We had ceiling tiles falling at Harvard Station in the past week, power problems system-wide downtown, a lawsuit over a death on the red line. How much longer can she wait to act? And, and Marianne, candidly, why wasn't this done on day two? She could have been looking months ago for a new general manager. So Charlie Baker was governor for 2,920 days. Maura Healey has been governor for 59 days, period, number one. Number two, she's trying to find the right person. And by the way, I think we all know, Folks aren't clamoring for this job. People across the country who she's trying to recruit look at this job and say, who can actually be successful? So in, as a result, she's been showing that she's personally engaged, toured the MBTA, went out to Springfield to check on the trains that don't get built. When they do, they're broken and they can't get down 495. And why was it on 495? They're trying to get her. I don't understand. <laughs> I, think, I think it was something to do with the bridges on the mass <laughs> pipe, but yes. But, anyways, but, but shouldn't you know? somebody want this job? Is, I mean, is that who? a problem? Who? Well, I mean, other no, big cities have, 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 been have very trouble transit to find agents. Well, because, to yes, not only because of the coverage, I mean, you see people jumping out of burning trains into the Mystic River, and you're like, I want that job. So she's looking, she's trying, and until then, they're going to have to make it work, and Gina Fiandaka will be out there every day showing she's Listen, well, I agree with Marianne that uh, it's a very hard recruitment job. I mean, you know, you take the MBTA job, it's just a countdown to when you get fired or resigned or, or pushed out. I think there's been nine general managers in a 
11, 12 year period under governors of both parties. So it's a tough job. But if I was Maura Healy, I would go after these Chinese rail cars, uh, cars harder. Deval Patrick put the contract through. It's not her problem. She should really go after that. The fair collection system is now delayed by, by uh, two years, which is ridiculous. So um, she's come to the point 60 days in now where you've got to appoint somebody or you own it. But she yeah. wants to get it right, and that's far more important. Well, progressives like Senator Elizabeth Warren and Congressman, Congresswoman Ayanna Presley have fought hard for student debt relief, but the conservative majority in the Supreme Court does not appear to see things their way. If the court rules against President Biden's loan forgiveness plan, will progressives face a backlash, or could it help with their case among young voters? Marianne? Supreme Court will face a backlash, and young voters will be energized. We saw that with abortion rights. We saw that with voting rights. We will now see it with this. It is very clear the Supreme Court is doing this Supreme Court court is undermining Joe Biden as president, undermining the presidency and trying to take things away from people that they've always had or want the majority wants. They're a minority based uh, court that is acting like they're a majority. Yeah, I, I think like campaign finance reform, everybody talks about it. Voters don't really care about it. That's the situation here. I, I actually think it's a negative issue for the Democrats because uh, there's a lot of people out there in middle, middle America who didn't go to college or who paid for their own college and, um, by working or paid off their loans, they don't want a freebie to people who didn't pay up.